Party. Yo, today's episode, just like every episode of the newly launched In The Mix show, <laughs> is brought to you by Spidey's Powdered Tumblers. For all your custom-made powder-coated powder coated stainless steel tumbler needs, make sure you hit up Jose Gonzalez over at Spidey's underscore powdered underscore tumblers on the old Instagram. Yo, somebody hit me up, and then I'll get, I'll get to Dustin. So somebody hit me up the other day and was just like, yo, send me a tumbler. I was just like, you got to hit up Jose Gonzalez. They're like, oh, but you get your tumblers for free. Yeah, and I was just like, no, sir, that's not how it works. So just to set the record straight, people, Jose Gonzalez is is, is a dude that I love. Dustin from Two Brothers Comics, uh, you know, cleaning and pressing. These dudes don't give me discounts. They don't give me nothing for free. I don't get free presses. I don't get free tumblers. They're the channel sponsors because I Fs with them heavy. They do phenomenal work. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to start promoting your stuff because I want to with nothing in return. So that's how that goes. So big, big shout out to Dustin, the comic book chiropractor. Hit him up for all your pressing stuff, man. And then, of course, big, big shout out to the entire Link Squad, El Squado del Linksy. For all your support, today we were giving away this. Boom. I got it right here in the box. We getting, we getting fisted. Oof. I don't want to comment. Yo, we should do that. Like the turn down for what? And it'd be like, damn, money, man. Get this <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, is, if you have not seen that video, if you have not seen that video, that is one of the craziest videos you'll ever see. What video is that? Uh, turned down for what? Uh, no, nah, I never seen that video. Really? Mm. No, nah, I never seen that video. Yo, today I feel so out of the loop with music today. Like, um, Beyonce dropped her album today, The Cowboy Carter. Justin Timberlake, and the only reason I knew that, I got a thing from Spotify. I was like, oh, did you check out the Beyonce album? I don't know, like, what? Justin Timberlake dropped the album today. I'm, like, completely out the loop when it comes to music. I spree I breezed through the Justin Timberlake album, and it seemed like it was pretty quick, pretty good. Same typical dance stuff, and then he has, like, the one Crimea River type slow song. So, yeah, that's pretty how, good. How you gentlemen doing tonight? I'm good. You know who's, really out, you know who's yeah. really out of the loop with music? 50 oh. cent. 50 cent. I don't know. He might be the only one that's in. He said he said Jay Z is next. <laughs> uh, all right. So we we're gonna we gonna we gonna unpack the entire Diddy well, situation. He's he, he out of the loop for saying that. He ain't the only one saying that. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's like the, I think the this movie. is a wild year. The pe people are finally <laughs> having the confidence to feel like they're not gonna be like murdered or arrested or blackballed for, wow. for speaking the truth. The reason they got murdered, the reason, you know. Not that kind of murder, weird. not slapping cheeks. <laughs> oh, so, so, oh, cheeks, I would clap. Oh, <laughs> shit. No, but I want to get into the Diddy thing, pause. And I, I want like, I want to talk about it, man. I think it, it's, it's a lot of stuff to talk about there. But first, I got to say what's up to the chat. Les Crucius, my guy, thank you for being here. House of X in the building. Thank you for being here. I will be seeing House of X tomorrow, actually, Leo and Wanston. It is Leo's birthday, one half of the House of X tandem. Uh, you know, going to go celebrate tomorrow in the BX. So seeing happy, House of X tomorrow. Happy birthday. Yeah, big shout out to Leo. I think it was his 40th, either his 39th or 40th. I'm not sure. Nice. Uh, Brian LCS in the building. Eli Gunther in the building. Mrs. Links was popping. Tino73 Nell was good, my guy. Actual Dracula, phenomenal interview earlier today with Chips and Darcy. That was, really that was yeah, dope. That was, really yeah, that was great. Hey, look, it's Anger Management 99. Hold up. Congratulations. You played yourself. Go take, go take, go take a shot. No, he was talking about, <laughs> about before. Every time, what was it? Like every time Remy said pass, every time I play the congratulations, uh, you played yourself clip, and every mm -hmm. time Mark argues. <laughs> He has to take a shot. Hey, oh, hey, what's going on over here? Hold up. Hey. Oh, shit. They look serious. Uh oh, all right. All right. <laughs> no, she was just saying she's really happy with her schedule. We're we're getting our master's schedule. So, like, this starting week is, like, my three-week run with off days. Like, I'll be off Tuesday this coming week. Then who knows after that. Oh, and when we it. say ma master's, we're talking about the golf tournament. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. We say masters, we just say masters and leave it up for discretion. <laughs> gotcha. 
Gotcha. Like yeah, they're, both, how you doing? they're both working on their degree together. I was like, cool. Yeah, yeah. You got so smart. Yeah. So yeah. So from what is that? The for the next two weeks, you're off this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's it. And then for me, it's like the next three weeks is just. Last year, I did 20 days out of 21 days. You know. Holy mm-hmm. crap! But uh, we'll see how it goes. Like it's really just based off how things play out. Like guaranteed that we're blocked out in the middle, but the front end and the back end of those those three weeks are a little bit subjective. Gotcha. Speaking of back end, we will get into the Diddy stuff. Gary B, the casual uh, comic guy in the building. He did John got comic. Uh, J Med, John comic guy envelope. <laughs> Jesus Christ. J Med, what's going on, J Med? Ben Parker comics. Happy birthday! It is Ben Parker's birthday today. Happy birthday, Ben! Everybody, sing him happy birthday in the chat. Digger Jim, thank you for tuning in, my guy. Good to see you, Marty Aleko. Good to see you, brother. Joffrey in the building. Actual drag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, inside joke. Brian Barrick, what is you just, going on? You just added a song to the list. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> my neck, my back. I love that guy. No, no. I will, will tell you when. This is how much I love actual Dracula. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. This picture cracks me up every time. Up, leave, leave it up, leave it up, leave it up. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like Wayne Gacy's illegitimate kid. <laughs> like, that's that's the last face you see as you're being tied down to a wooden plank in a basement somewhere. <laughs> or in the train tracks. And all you hear is <laughs> bad boys. Wow! Come out and play. play. Matt Spidey, what is going on? Give a free tumbler, Biatch. <laughs> oh yeah, so Leo turned forty. Uh, again, happy birthday to Leo. Collecting with Durs, my guy. Ben Parker, the big fifty-one today. You don't look a day over fifty, my dude. You can't give him ammunition, Ben. <laughs> In the building, Remy Q, baby, get your ass over here, Remy Q. <laughs> Pause. All right. Legion of Comics. Okay. Wolverado, my guy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not for me. I hope y'all make a mint, though. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So, you know, we talk. Oh, before we even, like, get into the stuff stuff, of course, we, you know, the most important thing that is happening next week on Tuesday, Ooh. Mark, you want, you want to tell them about this epic live stream you got going on? Yeah, really the most important thing happening in comic books this year is the launch of Ghost Machine proper. Wednesday, April 3rd is official Ghost Machine Day where Geiger kicks off its ongoing series. Red Coat number one drops from Jeff Johns and Brian Hitch. And Rook Exodus number one drops from Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok. I'll have the creative team of all three books and the OGs of the Geiger universe live with me Tuesday. Instead of doing my new DC Day stream, we're switching it up. They reached out and wanted to come on the channel, so I told them, hell yeah. So Jeff, Gary, Jason, Brian, all be, all be live with me Tuesday starting at 1.30. Be kicking it for an hour or so. And, of course, it'll be a big, awesome giveaway to get everybody else some ghost machine goodness in their hands so they can hold it. And I can confirm, I have read all three of them, and they are all fucking fire. Shockingly good with a couple of them. Better than I thought. Super yeah, Jeff Johns is a handsome man, too. Look at him. Yeah, Yo, smash. Next question. <laughs> the the key in all this stuff, they reached out to you. Not the other way around. That yeah, I don't, friend I don't, I don't is a big creators. Person. I don't aim think- those creators. Uh, I, did, I did a couple times early on that my inbox got bombarded by people that I would feel bad not making happy, you know? So I just, just didn't ever aim to do it. I, I'll have the Miranda brothers on whenever they have a project because we got a bond with them thanks to We Live. And, of course, John Jang's always welcome whenever we we call him. But we don't want to abuse that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Big shout out to be. Cliff. Cliff made my day yesterday. We were on Crisis Tri- Trivia on Cliff's channel, and Cliff let me know he will be going to King Con next Saturday, which is uh, – he made my day, so I'm going to meet Cliff in person. He's Speaking just coming of, to buy the print. Well, I hope so. Speaking of um, King Con, we got King Con 5 happening next Saturday, April 6th, in Park Ridge, New Jersey where I'll be selling the Austin LeMay print, 11 by 17 R print, limited to 50. It does come in a top loader. 
So you want to, you know, if, if you can come out, see me support cop one of these prints and um, whatever surplus is left over, we will be putting it up for the community to purchase. I don't know yet the modality to do that, whether that's going to be Instagram or. On Did you my, say what? modality? What? Yeah. My bad. Oops. Well, it's I actually very, was... it's very fortuitous that you're going to be meeting Cliff next week. Cause this way you can make good on what he wanted to get done when he wins the thing tonight. You can hand deliver it. <laughs> I'd be like that. Here you go, Cliff. Uh, I was trying to get my way out of that somehow, but I was like, yo, I'm, I'm stuck. Yeah, you're going to be wrist deep in it. All right, so I guess the topic of the news is before we go into any comic book stuff, any movie stuff. Oh, we do. We'll we be giving away these books in the chat. I got a nice little stack of books here. Nothing too crazy. This is about like a twenty-five dollar mystery box or something like that. Um, I'll give that to the chat later on. But um, I guess the big, the big news, obviously, of the week is this whole Puff Daddy stuff. P Diddy. Don't <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> around the bush. He's gonna stick it up his butt. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Drag. Leave it a little to the imagination, actual Dragula. Good Lord. This old Pete Diddy stuff. Uh, I know that's Nick's favorite rapper. So Pete Diddy, his houses were raided. I guess this is where a lot of – it's funny when people talk about this. It's like that. You got to give trigger warnings for S.A. You can't even say the words. Trigger warnings for S.A. Is, is, that, is that where we are in 2024? I'm like, so it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. I yeah, I mean, there are. You don't really have to get into details. Everyone kind of knows, right? Yeah. Well, he Except was, uh, no. right? That's an easy way. Yeah, to like say. misconduct. So they raided yeah. his house. Wait, wait. For me, this is what I think about this, right? So if this has been going on for 30 years or how many years, my whole thing is like, who did he piss off in the cabal yeah. to get banished from this whole thing? Because you know this is a whole consortium of motherfuckers doing terrible deeds. So it's just like, who did you piss off? Oh, there's, there's just different degrees about it because you kind of like, and like this. I don't know. I think a lot of this is if if taking conspiracy out of it and trying to look at a practical way. I think a lot of this can be credited to the Me Too movement. Like, I'm saying that because having watched that Quiet on Set documentary, you kind of get like an idea of how like the the law end of stuff and the people actually speaking on the industry end of stuff like numerous people said because of that movement where i didn't have to go speak alone like they couldn't mm -hmm. come they couldn't come shut me down if i'm with a group of people like it just took that long for a group of people to start speaking i think speaking out has become something that's a little bit safer to do or not necessarily safer but more comfortable for people to do because it's been an industry norm there's nothing about if what he did is true there's nothing unusual about it in that ecosystem all the way back to that video with little orphan annie talking about her and her mom going into the studio mm -hmm. in 19 this is just how it's been since it's been and that's that's the unfortunate part that it's taken this long for people to find an outlet to start speaking on it what are your thoughts nick well i mean it, it uh, hits a little closer for us I, I guess in new york but for me puffy's always been a little you're in texas bro well, born, back born when, back when, I, when I lived in New York, you know, it started with Puffy and, and DJ will know this with the with the City College incident. City College incident, uh, yeah, at the party. So somebody got trampled and died at that. I, I, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, so Puffy? they packed the party. No, let them just give some background. So they, they Puffy was in college at the time, and he threw a party. So he was throwing parties way back when, and it was just like let's just say an arbitrary number of five hundred capacity. And he sold like a thousand tickets. So the fire marshals went, blah, blah, blah. Everybody ran and somebody got trampled and died. Yeah. And it's, all, and it's always been weird to me that everybody who's had a hit <laughs> under him is dead, essentially, except for Mace. You know, you think about Black Rob, you think about Biggie. Oh, Mace had his baby? Mm -hmm. Did you say that Mace had his kid? You no, said everyone said everybody, had a kid under everybody's, him? Everybody's dead. Everybody's dead on him. You know, they had one big hit, and they're all dead. They're not saying they died of suspicion. It's a little, always been a little Usher. odd to me. 
Craig Mack. Usher? I should have had more than one big hit from Diddy. I think you have like three at least, right? No, well, I mean, more time. more people than not have, are dead, especially in the hip hop side of it. You know, so it's always been. So, a so, so, so who's that? Biggie. Biggie was murdered in '97. Big Mac died a few years ago. Um, he I, he was stricken with an illness, I believe. Black Craig Rob, um, Black cancer. Rob, uh, Kim Porter. Her death was sketchy, as anger management just said, which is Puffy's ex-wife. Damn, so. we, yo, yo, shit, yo, I'm also in Texas, people. So, <laughs> 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 yo, you will you will not catch me in the streets of New York anymore. So. It's always been a little odd to me now that, that this stuff coming out and people says, you know, that the things have always been there that, but. Niebuhr's know. career died. Are you kidding me? That dude's still making music like every year. Like I, yeah, I hear him Bieber. I hear his new stuff. All, I, I play WBBQ at work. It's like, just like the play anywhere music station. Mm -hmm. So you get like a mix of like eighties and nineties and some of the Taylor Swift stuff or the Bieber stuff that's playing right now. Just like the, the non excessive profane stuff i hear bieber all the time i don't even realize it's bieber half the time until like uh, my daughter plays something or something that dude's massively talented but i think he's shot out these days isn't he yeah 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 he got he married was, uh, that was that was the thing yeah he that, got married they've been and, probably and and then yeah definitely and then i know his wife is stricken with something as well so he takes care of her um just to put on my conspiracy theorist uh tin hat i know anger management anger management mentioned that all this came out when did he lost the lawsuit to Cassie? So he didn't lose the lawsuit to Cassie. He didn't personally settle with Cassie. The businesses that he was involved with settled. Therefore, it made him look like he was guilty and he settled, but it was the businesses that he was associated with. But all this stuff came out again, conspiracy theorists. When he decided to sue Diageo, now Diageo is the parent brand of several liquors. I think they have Ciroc. I think they, I don't know, Grey Goose, all these big liquors. Like Diageo is the parent company of all that stuff. So he decided to sue them for uh, discrimination or something. And then all of a sudden, he's a molester, whatever he is. Just out the blue. No. What say you in that conspiracy theories conspiracy theorist angle? I think that's a lame one. <laughs> they, they, they all got enough money to handle that kind of petty shit. I'm of the mindset that this is like a if this is happening now, I'm kind of curious what's going on in Washington, what bills are being signed mm -hmm. off on, what's being passed. That's oh, how it is a big distraction. Yeah, yeah. that's how it goes nine times out of ten. Keep in mind this is this is Homeland Security that coordinated and executed this raid. That's the federal government that executed this raid. That's the federal government that timed it, that decided the day, the time, which you now get guaranteed two-week news press. When they executed it, they spent months coordinating this. You saw how they went mm -hmm. in and out, hitting multiple problems at the same time. They spent months coordinating this, but they just happened to miss the motherfucker who, had, who was on a plane at the time. No, mm -hmm. man. That, that's, they didn't want to catch him. They wanted this news running like, this is going to come up a, probably a somewhat nothing burger or or something. It, it's something to keep the news cycle going. If they wanted this clean and easy with him there, they would have got it that way. But they need this to dominate news for longer. So pay attention to what's happening outside of this story. Nothing's going to happen with this story for weeks because that's what they need. They need this to play nothingness for weeks. And it's, it's, it's what's going on with the other hand. And that's coming directly from a member of the Illuminati people, so. Oh, straight up. Now, do you think these people that were raiding Diddy's home, were they looking for things? Or were they looking to destroy things? Looking to destroy the evidence? But somebody even you said know? they're looking to plant stuff. No, they don't, they don't need to destroy evidence. You want to have the evidence, just like in other cases that we don't need to. Oh, fuck it. The Epstein case. They have everything. They got him. They nailed him down tight. They got his backups out of his out of his go bag. And they have everything they needed. They have them in his pocket. He's now theirs. He, he belongs to them. Period. You don't want to destroy evidence. You want to own the evidence. No one, no one devalues information. Knowledge is power. And he gives you power over people. Just like you just know, like the whole like humiliation rituals and stuff. Like just like Diddy getting these talents in and banging them out at 14 years old. Now 
they're under <laughs> Diddy's wing and they don't want no one to ever know that shit. And they'll do whatever he says as long as he keeps feeding them. They're they're happy and they have their dream and Diddy's happy. He's getting his cut off. He, he created his own pyramid scheme out of buttholes. Yeah, no, 100%. Now, if you in the club and they drop Benjamins, you dancing or not? <laughs> yeah. <I do. laughs> oh, you broke Nick? I broke Nick with the pyramid scheme of buttholes. Pyramid scheme of buttholes. I'm, trying, I'm trying to figure it out visually, you know, because they always – they always give you the diagram of what the Ponzi scheme looks like. <laughs> Just <I'm> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, you smash this one, and, and you, he, he's on your down yeah. line now. Cross it <laughs> off. <laughs> no, it just it just looks like when you rack up the pool balls, but it's just all eight balls. <laughs> or, all eight or you know, it looks like the Greendale flag from Community. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, but uh, so oh, somebody just said something. TikTok. Right, so oh yeah, they need to shut down TikTok. That's why they got us running around. Didn't they just pass a, a thing right in uh, it, Congress it, or whatever? They're trying to ban TikTok. Uh, yeah, it's, it's still got to go through. Still got to go through the House, I believe. But uh, that's a, that's a double edged sword too. Like no country in the world lets another country run social media in their country, especially mm-hmm. not a communist country of China. Nothing against China, but the way their government is set up. This company owns and runs TikTok is in control of the algorithm the way that the communist nation of China is. That company is not autonomous. If the government says, we want your data, they willingly say, yes, sir, here it is. That's the law over there. Where over here, when our government asked Apple to unlock a cell phone, they're like, we can't violate customer trust terms and agreements. It's against the law for us to do that. You can you can confiscate the phone and do with it what you want legally, but we can't willingly open it for you. That's not how it is over there. So the Chinese government has full access to 100% of the data collected by TikTok and beyond mm-hmm. that. So China doesn't allow American platforms over there. No country allows that stuff. They have, they have their own version of stuff, their own people kind of running it. So that end of it makes sense. The way that the bill is written is too ambiguous where this is a setup bill. Like it's a bill like on the surface, it looks good. Like the people that don't want that, you can get it shut off. But on the other end, they're looking to the future. Say in an election season, you get this passed and the Republicans don't like the the algorithm on threads just playing to the Democrats. And the Democrats don't like the algorithm on X playing to free speech. The government has the ability to shut those down now too if they see fit. It's not a it's not a just foreign countries thing. That isn't how it was written. It's an overreach bill. What's up, Iggy? Uh, not to get away from that too quickly. I have an unboxing that I'm gonna unbox later on. Thanks I'll for sharing. Was, yeah, I'll tell you who it was from, and the box has no tape in it whatsoever on it, <clears> and they could have just opened it up at the post office and just took out the contents. But I'm I'm gonna open that up later on on camera. I think the important thing for all of us. The question is is Tamu is safe. Will Remy still be able to get his stuff? Because if they if they go off to TikTok, Tamu will be next. I think next is is Tamu, right? Yeah. Yeah, Another another fun, interesting factor. Like uh, I took the uh, content creator survey for YouTube, which I don't know how many people it went out to, but a content creator survey went out like a week ago. It's like a Mm thirty minute survey, and YouTube was just polling on how much you do and all kinds of stuff and your thoughts of Instagram, Twitter, asking other platforms and wanting your feedback on stuff. They're definitely, definitely concerned with numbers or wanting to, or just trying to get, they're trying to get like your happiness gauge of their platform and wanting to know what they can do better. And it made me think like uh, if TikTok does get shut down, if they, cause they have the choice to, to sell it off the, the American brand of it, sell it off to an American company to run it on our servers and stuff like that. And we have server control here. And if they don't do that, it's getting cut out. All those people that financially live off content on TikTok, mm-hmm. they're going to have to find somewhere else, you know. And it's and they're going to come to YouTube, and then Shorts are Instagram is going to be primarily number or, numero uno for sure. But Shorts are going to like all these people getting these mad traction on Shorts. Like get it in while you can, because if people leave TikTok, they're going to flood the other ones even heavier. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think shorts are doing as they did. I don't know if they changed something in the algorithm. So, like, some people that that get thousands and thousands of views um, aren't hitting the same with that same type of content. They go hot and cold for people, but I dropped them one in two weeks, and it got over 500 views in no time. Yeah, yeah I've been doing them just because I like to, to – 
to do them and show off my collection, like my new comic book hauls and stuff like that. And then I, was I did doing a picture them. of Diddy at the airport to the <laughs> Bill Bixby. Yeah. He did look super sad. Um, <laughs> and again, not to continue with this whole morbid, disgusting topic. If if dude is guilty of this, throw him under the jail. Uh, someone in our world, comic creator. Oh, Ed uh, Pish for being a pedophile. Ed Piscor being <laughs> a pedo. Uh, yeah, so correct me if I'm wrong. So he was sending out messages trying to groom some young young people, or did he I actually groom, like I think groom is a definitely a weird word for it. Like, what is that? I don't even know what that means. Like, gr groom no, is just it, like that's like brainwashing. Literally, you're 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 grooming someone. You're brainwashing. That's a long -term brainwashing. Plan long-term plan to customize somebody's behavior to fit your needs wants or narrative like that's not what? grooming he was dude was hitting on a 17 year old straightforward man my man was just he was being creepy like if she was three months older and 18 years old he's still a creepy fuck you just mean a creepy fuck creepy but when did brainwashing become an antiquated term and they was like hey let's replace this with grooming i think when they add sexual context to it of some former nature yeah so, uh, interesting. So anyway, so he was messaging a few um, underage girls, right? You can't, they, they fucking underage. And he's I only, what? I only saw the text and the thing from one. I don't know beyond that. The 17 year old is the only one I saw. I think it was three total that they were reporting. I didn't care that much. I called like, yo, dude's a creepy pedo. I'm out. Got it. But And then you know what's like, you know, You're muted, Nick. Wasn't he at Heroes last year? Yeah, he, he was at Heroes. He was like, dude, it's so nice to meet you. He shook his hand. I'm going to watch that hand now. Finally, I'm going to have to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I met him, shook his hand, and he invited me to an Illuminati party. And I was just like, oh, yo. He was all like, <laughs> he looked at GJ and said, young man, if you're ever in Philadelphia, you need a place to stay. I got this room. It's got <sighs> cartoons on the TV. We got like Xbox, some popsicles. Yeah, and you'll meet my roommate, and then he showed me that funny picture of actual Dracula that Nick's been showing. <laughs> he said, come, come, I, yeah, want, I want you to see my new closet. Cliff said, you better wash that hand before you fist me. Oh, my God. Jesus. I, I promise, Cliff, I, I will wash my hand. <laughs> um, yeah, holy it, shit. It seems super creepy. You know what's even funnier? Like, he has this persona. Like, I don't, I don't know the guy from Adam. I've never, like, really. I've seen, like, two cartoon kayfabe videos in my lifetime. Just I, I don't read Red Room. It's never been on my real radar of stuff. And I went and looked up this guy, right? And like you know, you always see him with this hat on and these these blacked out Ray Bans and a, a buttoned up flannel shirt. But I mean, you look at him like five years ago, and he looks like the kid that looks like Mervin from Toxic Avenger before he got swole. <laughs> yeah, who is this nerd? <laughs> like, it's like he it's like he found a shtick that he could hide his his insecurities behind, and then uh then got cool for it. Like he didn't yeah. always have that hip hop style to him whatsoever. Not even till it's just recent. Yeah, that's definitely a persona. But Red Room, I really, really enjoyed Red Room. Now a lot of people, because I was seeing, you know, people talking about this on YouTube and stuff like that, and they're like, "Oh, we should have seen the signs. Look at Red Room." Like you can't compare an artist's creative work with reality. Like I, I, I don't know. Meaning, like, no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, just because you create. Like horror, crazy, fucking fuck shit. Do, do, do you do that in real life? Yeah, no. that, that's super true. Like Mark Millar was asked before, like, dude, you're like, someone pointed out, like, like you're such a nice guy, an easygoing guy. Where do you come up with these insane stories? He's like, did I get like any kind of those thoughts or urges? They come out on paper, and that's it. There's nothing left after that. Have to come up with you more. Think, you think cart? Uh, what it is? Cartoon is kayfabe. You think that's that's done? I don't know. From what I understand, they're. Uh, their channel, their entire channel went private, silent, and was unaccessible for up to seven hours or so the day of the announcement. And then they re reopened it to the public that same day. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Jim Rugg, I mean, like, let's, what, have they posted any content on their channel since the announcement that wasn't pre recorded? I don't think so. And I don't mean a live stream, I mean, like, recorded post. No, I don't, I don't think they did anything. Like, I think it's been dead since. I think I might be wrong. <laughs> That's gonna be crazy because that's hugely financially uh, successful channel with the numbers they get. Like they're making money on it, obviously, on top of what they do. Yeah, hundred 
Hundred percent, dude. That's didn't you know years. Siegel and Schuster were really aliens with superpowers? There you go. Um, all right. Let's let's let's, let's get out it's of these morbid ass. Making money, that's for sure. Supperman. <laughs> Yo, I did. I read Wonder Woman seven today. Loved it. The episode. I mean, the Wonder Woman seven. The issue with uh, her and Superman trying to find Batman a present. You hated it. My guy, no, I loved it. Every okay. every issue that that and that that was a hangover issue, or yeah. a, a, what you call a layover issue, bro. That was a layover issue. Like Sam Pierre was on on break to do his catch up. Like it takes place after issue three, and it's just mm -hmm. a I'm like, dude, that was so good. And what a nice touch at the end. Like let's just get him. Let's get him. Little camera. What are those camera a photo booth roll? And yeah, they're just a little. I'll still, I'll still crush a coal for him. They leave it mm -hmm. for him straight to the uh, the kids' home. Leaves the diamond, drives off, and you see the photos the on the dashboard. My like, God, that's dope! Just say it's just a reminder that they're his friends. Like that whole issue was was fantastic, man. Every and, issue um, of that book has highlighted a different, very specific yeah. aspect of Wonder Woman in great detail. Like it's been amazing. Yeah, I've been digging it. You've been reading that, Nikki, Nikki boy, my Nikki, my boy. I honestly haven't been reading anything DC for a while. I think I'm gonna well, I'm gonna pick up uh, DC Unlimited again. And start reading that way. What what's on your list right now? Like, what are your top three on your list? I've been reading like I've been enjoying the hell out of Transformers, Cobra Commander, uh, and Ultimate Spider Man. Uh, Becker was telling me that it looks like Danny Warren Johnson's done art at six. We know, but is he done writing at nine? I don't know. You know, I saw some Kickstarter with him that he's he's re-releasing something from his past too that I can't remember. Probably Extremity. Yeah, I think it was Extremity. Yeah, got to be Extremity. It's either that or Space Mold. Space Mold only ran for one volume, so it has to be Extremity. What's up, Beckerman? How are Everything you, sir? Is readily available on shelves. Yeah, Wonder Woman is fantastic. Uh, Mark, what's on your uh, top three like right now that you're reading? I just read this like just shortly ago. Like y'all remember Superman mm -hmm. Space Age that came out? Three yeah. issues, hundred pages a piece. Mark uh, Mark Russell, Mike Allred, and it was fantastic. This is kind of like not connected to anything own world origin type stories, but Superman Space Age was a complete. Uh, no spoilers. It was a complete thing. It's three hundred pages of pure ten out of ten comic storytelling. This is going back doing Batman Dark Age, where it's touching on. Batman's story through that same timeline. Holy shit, that's good. Absolutely banger. I love Mike Allred's art. Dude, it is it is so good. So good. I missed out on that. Uh, uh, another one, Green Lantern, Alan Scott, penultimate issue was amazing. This whole miniseries has uh, just, it's been like a uh, master class in how to write subjects that most people would discredit as woke. If you if the story's good, if the quality's there, if the care and consideration is there to the characters, you know, this character's been around 80 years and this story is fantastic. And if you hear anyone discrediting it for being woke, that, that they just show their true colors. It's amazing. Hmm. Um, what else? That's that's two. I'm trying to see what I've read recently. Oh man, I would have to say the Geiger stuff, the uh, the unnamed. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't. Yeah, but it was good. It was good. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. I, I'm I've been like real excited for Red Coat since that 80 page giant. Just something about that character with its like intertwining with history. It exceeded all expectations. Geiger be Geigerin, and this is like really exciting. <laughs> to see that. But Rook Exodus surprised me the most, you know, like because it's in its own universe, it's its own thing. And I was wondering how hard it could hit. But oh, okay. Because it's in the future. Well, no, it's in a separate universe altogether. Geiger is as far as the unnamed timeline goes. Everything everything else in that connected universe is before Geiger. It, Red Coat was the first one in the timeline. Geiger is the last. Junkyard Joe, Northerner, First in the middle. Game, all of that comes in between. Rook Exodus is a completely separate standalone sci-fi story. And I was wondering how good can it be? Like the art, of course, would be great. Jason Fabak is going to crush it. And I get yeah. there and I get halfway through the book. I'm like, yo, why is this so tense? Then it dawned on me. Jeff John's writing all of these. Like, of course, yeah. they're going to be amazing. That first issue feels like it should be a penultimate issue. And you're waiting for a finale to happen in issue two. Like, you're like, where can we possibly go from here? 
Like it, the tension, the stakes, like it's it's all up there, man. So yeah, I've always been, I've always been psyched that. about that one just because of the character design was is was awesome. It was taking from me, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward. I mean, I'm not gonna read it a month and a half early like some people, but um. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Yeah, dude, I was sitting down reading the Geiger uh, Ghost Machine number one special they put out last month, you know, to get everyone hyped for this, the sampler. And my wife comes walking in and lays down in the bed and she sees me like rereading the Rook stuff. And she saw Dire Wolf, the female character, and she asked about it, thought it just looked cool. And she took the book for me and read it. And now she has me pulling her copy because she's invested just from that uh, that sampler we got that lays out the, the where, wins and whys. So it's, dude, it's good. It's good. So for the you read the the three books. How would you not rank them as far as an order? Like Gar Garg is one, Red Coat is two, Rook is three. Like how would you rank them? Red Coat, Red Coat, Rook, Geiger. All they're all up here, and I put them in that order. I think Geiger is just because we have the most content out of Geiger, so we're more familiar with it. So everything about Red Coat, everything about Rook, felt completely new. Where I'm like investing myself in every panel and page. And I'll tell y'all now, there are Easter eggs in these books, not necessarily tying into other stuff in the books, but ghost machine Easter eggs where you can tell that the creators are having a blast making these books, which is a great sign. Holy shit. I'm, I'm excited to read that. I just want to remind everyone, uh, welcome to In The Mix. We've been going strong for three years now. Uh, this Sunday, <laughs> oh, I, I Eddie motherfucker. it feels, it feels just like yesterday we started this. <laughs> Yo, three years strong. This Sunday actually will mark our three year anniversary of in the mix. Oh, the gentle, the gentlemen have joined me on the panel since July 22nd, 2022, right? <laughs> Logos and everything on the thumbnails. <laughs> and then in J January 13th of um, 2023, that's when we dropped the DJ links out the title and we just, it just became in the mix. And um, I thank you guys, but in the mix, three year anniversary. What Round time of applause that, for yourself. What time did that show first start? Just to, just for my own edification. The other one, 11 months ago. What, what time though? What was, was it uh 8 PM, 9 PM, 8, 8 1 PM? No, we always do 9 PM Eastern. Okay, there you go. I just wanted to throw that out there. For me, what I'm reading and what I'm really enjoying, what did I read this week that I really enjoyed? I think I just flew through all my books. Just, yo, I'm on this kick where I just want to read. And yeah. sometimes in reading them, I'm just like flying through them and I'm not necessarily digesting it the way I'm supposed to. And then on the next one, I'll just like forget stuff. But um, Wait, what was that sound again? Do you, do, murder. You, like, murder. Do, you, do you stagger your stack like because i binged read today so i've staggered my stack like i know this is a fast read so it went on top i know this is a little bit more in depth so it went like i kind of staggered it based on my mood like i put a, a heavy read on top and a heavy read on bottom because if i get tired i don't want to try to read the heavy read while i'm tired you know and do you do that kind of stuff so so the way that i do it is i put the books in order from level of excitement to mm. like, like that. So if I'm like super excited to read, let's say new burn. So new burn is automatically on top that week. Incredible Hulk is all of automatically on top that week. And then the last one is I'm usually excited about it, but I know it's heavy. Like wonder woman is probably the most heavy or dense book that I get. So that week wonder woman is always last. Cause I know I, I need to sit with that and possibly read the page over and over to, to properly digest it. But something like, um, what just dropped this week that was cool, that Roscoe pointed it out. Oh, um, Feral. Feral was cool. Like, uh, I, I enjoyed it. Um, it's, you know, the cat version of Stray Dogs. The cats were too nice. Everyone knows cats are assholes. So Taylor Winder um, said it was okay. The cats just kind of meandered around, but that's what cats yeah. do. So I get it. <laughs> yeah, so you got to wonder if, if it's the parakeet <laughs> version or the goldfish version next. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see the rap version. Feather. I always, I always kind of like. All right, I know this is going to be good, so I want to leave it for last. This is, this might be bullshit. Good bullshit, maybe. So I kind of like. If I know something's going to be good, I don't want to read it right away, just in case all the other stuff sucks. So I like, I'll, I'll layer it in what I think it might be good, or if it, I know it's good, so. 
Here we go. Cats are dicks. <laughs> uh, what else was cute. good? Uh, feral. No, kittens are super cute. Feral. Yeah, it's like I even forgot what came out this week. The six, the six um, finger was yeah, no offense, Nick. The six finger was fire. <laughs> the one, the one hand has been super dope. Yo, there's a book called Under Heist. I think it's Mad Cave. It might not be. Uh, Under Heist is is phenomenal. I'm, it's just I'm, I'm all all about the indies right now. I feel bad because like I'm reading. The only DC that I'm, I'm currently consuming is uh, Godzilla Kong Justice League, Superman, and Wonder Woman. I'm, I'm telling you like I'm right now. I'm telling you right now. When you go see that movie, you're gonna be glad that you've been reading that book. But I'll just leave it at that. Let's talk about the movie without spoiling anything. Don't spoil it, Mark! Don't spoil it! No spoilers! I'll try not to. What, what do you give it on a, on a scale of... Uh, super green. Green to brown shit water. Super green. Definitely super green. No buttholes detected. Uh, it, was, it was a non-stop, all-out, fun-ass movie. This, uh, set, this set the new record for monsters on screen time. More monsters on screen in this one than in any other... Monster movie, Godzilla Kong, out of either one, like it was, it was just badass. The the story, like uh, we're right where we want to be. Like you just you too much, too much. No, if you follow the movies, you're no, just we're right where we're right where we want to be as as fans going into this. We stay in the pocket, and they just start swinging haymakers, and you're like, let's go. That's what that's we needed. A, that's a mixture of sports terms that I vaguely I, understand. <laughs> stay in the pocket. Stay in the pocket and throw haymakers. Yeah. Football and boxing. Dude, when it, it added, again, like one of the things that I was most interested in is being like one of those like goofy nerds that like playing the connected story universe type stuff with everything. They added, they added again, layers of lore onto like the stuff that we, that we were introduced to through Godzilla versus Kong with going to hollow earth for the first time and diving into the uh, Monarch TV show where they introduced like access Monday, the place between. And so like uh, they, they, they dive into and explain some more lore and introduce stuff, but it is so fast paced. It's got like the pacing of Godzilla versus Kong. You know, that one just, mm, moved, just that was fast paced. Yeah. That was Adam, super fast Adam, paced. Yeah. Adam Wingard is back directing this one, writing it. Like he, he's like, yo, this is the fifth installment in a monster fighting movie franchise. Let them fight. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. At the end of the day, the humans are there to supplement the story and provide exposition. That's it. Yeah, we want to see fucking Man. monsters fight. Yeah, you know how J Man does his rating scale. He has a space system where he he rates everything between one and two, like uh, story, pacing, action, characters, and excitement. He messaged me after he got out. He's like, but this is a guy that didn't like Dune, right? Yeah, because it wasn't like the books. He messaged me and he said, like, I have no clue how to rate this movie. That was insane. I said, I know you're gonna have to when you get to characters when you start rating it. You're just going to be judging Titans. He said, I know this is insane. Wow. It, it's the that's, Titans that's movie, good. hands down. But I'm going to tell you, there's enough human element to it that just props it up. It just props it up just good enough. And uh, man, the, the, the trailer showed so much, but they didn't come near spoiling that movie. Not even near it. Surprise, motherfucker. Yeah. 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 What's up, dogs? Did you see Godzilla versus Kong? No spoilers. No. Pass. <laughs> what? what? You know, didn't even take time to get warmed up. He's just like, I fuck will, that. I will. I will watch it when it's when it's streaming. I don't need to run to the movies to watch that one. Oh, it, it was so. Good. I understand the excitement. Pass. There you go. That's two shots. Am. <laughs> so. I've been I've been waiting to ask. They should be drunk years. by now because I've been talking MonsterVerse. There you go, MonsterVerse. Me with the congratulations you played yourself. We've turned into a drinking game, which is insane for a brand new show for people to already <laughs> catch on to us. Um, <laughs> Remy Q, I've been I've been wondering this all day. So we sadly lost thespian Lou Gossett Jr. today, and immediately whenever we lose a celebrity, I go to Remy Q Studio. Wait, he was a lesbian. Who? Thespian. Lou Gossett Jr.? I mean, like, uh, dude, I, mean I hate to be the, the guy in the Guardians movie, but who? I don't know who this is. So what was he? He was he was uh Iron Eagle, the Iron Eagle movies. 
Um, he was in The Principal, starring John, uh, Jim Belushi. Also in An Officer and a Gentleman with Richard Gere. I, I, literally, Sanskrit. You all are speaking a 5,000 <laughs> A dead language to me. I have no idea what any of that is. <laughs> Not one bit of what you just said makes in, any enemy sense. mine. Enemy mine. Ruth. Enemy oh, he mine. was in. He was in prosthetics in that movie. The first Punisher yeah. movie with Dolph enemy Lundgren. Mine. There enemy you go, Remy. The Punisher know. movie. The Punisher was, um, movie. Frank Castle's friend. The the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. The black dude. Oh yeah, so enemy mine, I get. I understood that reference. <laughs> yeah, it, well, you won't recognize him because he was the alien. <laughs> he was the alien. Oh my god! Okay, now I'm upset. That's all you need to say. He was the alien. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was him. <laughs> that was, that's the saddest fucking movie in the world. Oh my gosh! Man, who would have thought that it could turn into such a tearjerker? Like and the rest of the time, you're rooting for. I was like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. No joke. I was a, a phenomenal film. I don't even know. How could we? Have we not talked about this before? I've actually never was, seen that movie. He was still we talked alive. about Enemy Mine a lot when the first oh, issue of Void Rivals oh, came out because it was it was Enemy Mine. My gosh, gosh. Enemy Mine, yeah. Yeah. Nick just waved with his four fingered hand. Hi, monkey. Hand. Don't don't short me, Mark. You got half a finger. You know what he did? He went listening to his mommy, and she bit it off. Oh shit. <laughs> Wow. This is like this is like rest development. <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm gonna see Godzilla versus Kang. Godzilla versus Kang. Oh. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a core drama. Hey, it, it ain't, it ain't a whole lot of movies. Kong's still gonna hit him in the face. Is Diddy in that movie? Oh shit, imagine that Godzilla versus Kang. Straight murder. Will Will Smith. So, <laughs> oh shit. So Kang, where were you on the night of January 2nd? <laughs> when are you seeing it though, come. DJ? I'm seeing it tomorrow at 1.50 p.m. I'm gonna oh man, I gotta wake up super early tomorrow to take my car to go get inspected. Uh tomorrow's the last day, and I remember today. Damn, I need to get the car inspected. Well, don't you have a week week uh buffer after that? Yeah, what you do in your whole time? It's just like, <laughs> yeah, you're. I think you're gonna have fun with it, man. It's just pure fun from start to finish. But that's there, what I want. I just want. There's a, I just there's want to see Titans fight and eat fucking popcorn. No, there's a scene when I literally like I'm sitting there right, smiling much. through the whole movie. But there's a scene where I, it literally made me just like jump up in my seat, like just start cheering at the screen. Like I'm like, it got me so excited. I can't wait to talk about it with people. Was that the pig? Was that the piggyback ride? No, no. By that point in the movie, like everyone's just at like at full midnight. Nick, <laughs> <laughs> that movie goes yeah. so hard; it just leans into the monster verse so much. No. Rim, you got your song list? Says DJ Leaks yeah, in the right. private chat. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had we had homework. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get into that. Um, X Men ninety seven. Are we up to date on X Men ninety seven? Right. You can he tell us yes. because they're they're talking about it at the barber shops. Like, yo, yeah. I took Elijah to get a haircut, and they were like, "Yo, you seen X Men '97?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." I mean, the the floor is yours, sir. Uh, Speak thought, about X Men '97 in only the way that you can, sir. Bless well, us I, with your eloquence. I, I still love the show. Um, I thought they kind of wrapped this one up a little too quick. Uh, I thought they could have expanded the story a bit more, but I, I still I still am liking the show. So I haven't lost faith yet, Marvel. Mm. Mm. But you didn't love this episode. Last week you were loving it. I, I'm still loving the show. I just I, I felt like this could have been a to be continued part two. I would have waited for this. Ooh. I would have waited for it to, to uh I would have waited for next week to see what happens. I thought they just kind of they sped it up a bit, is all. You you want a two liner. Two liner! Yeah. Oh, yeah, two episodes. Yeah, you could you could do two episodes for this. I mean, especially when you, they left you with a cliffhanger. I, that maybe that's what gets me. It's like they leave you with a cliffhanger and then they wrap it up the next episode. That's too quick. Like I, you could you need to drag it out a little bit. So supposedly, I think the 
episode list was released or leaked or whatever. And then now we're going to start getting those three episode arcs. So I think the next one is like a two episode. Then the one in between that is a standalone. Then the next three are a three episode arc. And then I think it finishes up with like a two episode arc. That's cool. Yeah. What say you, Nicholas? Are you up to date? No. <laughs> Do you give a shit about X-Men 97? No. Yeah, I forgot. This came out when you were like 46. Doji. Just go down the stairs. There's nothing down there. The light bulbs don't work. Oh, never mind those chains in that board. I just want to take pictures. Wow. This (laughs) this dude, he would not be uh, allowed in a school zone, that's for sure. Uh, so you you don't give a shit about it at all, Nick? No, I was never really big into it when I when it first came out either, which is sad because I'm probably the only X Men reader on the panel. But um, yeah, um, never really caught on me. Yeah, because the rest of these guys are in the um, I hate X Men chat group. No, I just hate modern Marvel for black and bullshit. <laughs> Did you watch it, Mark Marcus? I got about halfway through it. By the time I watched Morph get a boner because he thought he walked in on Wolverine naked in the shower, I'm like, I'm like, okay, here we go. We're doing Disney <laughs> shit now. Fuck this show. I'm out. I want to go get some water now. Morph, more oh shit. He's, he he blesses us with that tidbit and then breaks out. Morph did get excited when Wolverine. He thought Wolverine was in the shower, and then when Gambit, he was just like Remy. He was like, oh, Remy, is that you? Put your clothes on, Morph. Mon ami, whatever. Yeah, Morph, Morph, Morph was definitely like looking for a gauntlet. Yeah. Oh, that, that kind of, one, one of the things that I was praising so heavily about the first two episodes was how, like, okay, they're, they're, they're making X-Men 97, and they're still making it as a kid's show. You know, that's fine. Like, that plays into the nostalgia that works. If they start putting like adult themes through this shit, it loses its context. You know, it's not an adult show, so it's just fucking weird when it's for kids. And if it's a kid show, it's fucking weird when you got people getting off on walking in on other dudes in the shower. Like, what, what the fuck, fuck people cared about consent? Isn't that a thing? Free tumblers. <laughs> Free tumblers. I think that Disney, uh, I don't know, I think that they did drop the two strong first episodes. They knew that those would air well, and they're just going to steadily decimate this shit as it goes forward. I hope not. I oh. hope not, too. I want to love it. I, I, like, I was so excited to be excited for those first two, but I'm just so hypersensitive to the Disney bullshit that they do. And, you know, it isn't like they've slammed on brakes and decided to not make, like, triggering content all of a sudden, you know. Like, only a couple months ago, Iger and them spoke out and said, okay, we've gone too far. All of our stuff is hot topic content we got to stop doing it but you still got at least 12 months of the hottest topic content before they ever hit the brakes coming out you know what i'm saying like so it should be no surprise if they're doing adult themes and all kinds of stuff and like making ant-man movies like praising communism and shit like that's that's going to be what we get for the next 12 months from the that literally happened like like y'all keep that in mind that literally happened in an american made movie a company that prospers from capitalism they were praising and preaching communism to the audience. That that's fucking crazy. Whether you like yeah. communism or not, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, uh, J Met says I agree with Mark. Episode three wasn't really kid safe. I don't think it's it's made for kids. I think the the subject matter is too dense for kids to to get it. So even by, like I, back I, in I the got day, it as a kid, I could follow it as a kid just fine. Y'all have that's different. Story? You you were fucking born with a comic book in your hand. <laughs> Remy wasn't. He loved that shit, didn't you? That's one yeah, thing that everyone united on at school. Like yeah. whether whether you grew up in a comic store or not, you went to school. Motherfuckers were watching Batman. We're watching X Men. We're watching Spider Man. That was. But you didn't Rogue, had a, Rogue had a bigger booty back then. You know, pounded it off. Apparently. <laughs> Yeah. It was cool too because like X Men was a that was it was a show that you could watch where you didn't I, you didn't have to read the comic to to get it. Not but at back all. In the, like not nineties kids are in twenty twenty four kids like you know not I grew up watching fucking softer, bro. Soft the shit. I grew up watching 
yo, eight years old, my mother's just like, yo, I'm going out to fucking go buy milk. Here, watch a movie. Just stay busy. And hands me like Friday the 13th and the Dallas Connection. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, thanks, mom. But like, I'll, I'll stay busy for the next four hours. I thought it was weird that after I watched what I watched this episode, I was surprised that Morph didn't start jacking off. You know what I'm saying? Like that didn't that shouldn't be how I come out of the that show. Like, why am I surprised that he didn't jack in that scene? Actually, that wasn't his belt buckle. It was just disguised as his belt buckle. Yeah, it was definitely made for setting up future storylines. It did a fantastic job of reintroducing Mr. Sinister when as Morph fast. Got Wolverine's cheeks. It's coming, y'all. Hang in there. <laughs> that's the, that's the second morph Wolverine kind of. You think Morph is trying to diddy Wolverine? They're, they're gonna they're gonna make it. They're gonna make it out to be like, oh, Wolverine is four hundred to six hundred years old. You think he didn't get curious in that time? And he's buying. It. <laughs> Watch, they're, gonna, they're gonna make Wolverine buy. It's gonna happen. He's gonna start going slash. Ah. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> he's gonna have an accident with the claws and cut his junk off. He's gonna become a transvestite. They're gonna, it's going to heal right back. It's going to heal right back. Oh, Nick, Nick, you can't say that word in 2024. Ooh. So do you mean like uh, in the movie? And, and Piscor where, said that. In the movie, when he had that scene with Mystique, it'll be like that, but with Morph? Like in the tent? Oh, when she was like supposed to be Jean. Yeah, and she like was changing. It would be like that, but with Morph. And dude. <laughs> the generation makes everything come Jesus Christ. Yo, what is Wolverine's favorite article of clothing? <laughs> <laughs> I give I give up, DJ. What is it? What is Wolverine's? <laughs> and that cracked him up before you even said it. That that's the whole thing. Jesus. I was laughing at his ass. I, I hate it too much. <laughs> Ooh, I am hot. Oh, uh, man. Well, now he's got Yo, that's another thing, right? So I'm watching this. Great point, Gary B. Gene wakes up, original Gene, and Wolverine is all like, oh, my God, Gene. Uh. Why, is this, why does Cyclops allow this guy to just stick around, with his, knowing that he's in love with his hey. wife and shit like that? It's just like... My dude, my dude I can't, it's one of the, the coldest lines in movie history was... Uh, in the first X-Men movie when he's hitting on Jean and she gives him the, the she brushes him off and she goes walking out of the room as Cyclops is walking in. And what uh, happens when a toad gets struck by lightning? No, Wolverine, Wolverine don't even uh, turn around. Look, he goes, you, you want to tell me to stay away from your girl? And Cyclops replied yeah. like a goddamn gangster. If I had to do that, she, she wouldn't be my girl. No, it don't matter who you keep around a real one. It don't matter at all. No. Shout out to Cyclops. Shout out to Cyclops actor James Marston, who oh, wrote him. letters, who fuck wrote him. letters in defense of the pedophile on the Quiet Place. Quiet on set, yeah. I mean, a the Quiet those, Place, Quiet on set. Yeah, a lot of those, a lot of those people's uh, started writing more letters recently, and they were saying, "Oh my God, I had no idea at the time. We were just told some kid was trying to set up our friend for money. Uh, we feel terrible." Like and at the time, you know, that was a close case with a minor, so they had no clue what what that guy did. And so he went out to all of his. Can you imagine how bad Drake had to feel when he went into a court and saw all those people there supporting that guy who did all that shit to him? What's up, Izzy? Yo, Cliff's yeah. favorite. Uh, Cliff's favorite villain is Mephisto. <laughs> that was such a sad, sad documentary, bro. Yeah, I know that was that was terrible. That was like super terrible. Then I'm like. That um, America Chavez, my child, was up here the other day, and we're like, "Yo, you were watching this shit when you were a kid. You're punished. Like, <laughs> <laughs> go to your room. I don't give a shit if you're 25." <laughs> like, I was just like, "What the hell was going on with with all yeah, this stuff?" I miss that era. Like, Keenan Thompson did an interview recently where he's like, "Yo, this is crazy to hear all this stuff that happened because we didn't really have any interactions with a lot of these people. They're like the uh, alumni that came right after ours, kind of thing." Like. And uh, I was of the, the Keenan Thompson era, you know, like I didn't uh, see the Amanda Bynes show. I didn't see her when she made it onto the, the circuit for those shows. They were just like right after my time. But I, I couldn't imagine having grown up with all that and seeing all your like for years, your childhood influences and idols just get destroyed and they're just shallow, hollow shells of what they once were. And it's just sad. Rem, were you a, a Nickelodeon guy? Yeah, and I don't know what the heck you guys are talking about. 
But Enemy Mine was really sad. Uh, I mean, the first 20 minutes, nothing but action. And then after that, that's when the real story begins. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I, I, I mean, back in those, well, I guess we had cable because it was like, no, back in the day, like when I was like, whatever, when Nickelodeon was first popping and all that stuff, I didn't have cable. So I didn't know about Nickelodeon or the Disney Channel or none of that shit. I was we didn't strictly... have the Disney Channel, but I I watched a shit ton of Nickelodeon, like all all that. Are you afraid of the dark? Uh, Double Dare, and remember the one that you like the, of the dark on? Canadian show. I didn't know was from Canada. Until oh yeah, are you afraid of the dark? Yeah. And then once Double I Dare. and I rewatched it, I was like, oh shit, all these people are Canadian. <laughs> wow, <laughs> like it was so hey. hey, oh my god, hey. Question. So your shorts, that was a good one. If you had your druthers, if you had your choice, which game show would you rather go on? Double Dare or Funhouse? Family Feud. Show me jeans! <laughs> Family Feud. Press your you, you, you guys never heard of Funhouse? TV Funhouse. No, Funhouse. It was like um so Double Dare came out first. Say it was the same concept that you the name of the game show that Diddy would host. No oh, shit, yo, I'm out. Double Dare. No, no one? I would go on Double Dare. I don't know what the fuck else you're talking about. What's a fun house? It's, it's like, literally Well no, Fun House was the exact same concept as Double Dare. So the the two teams will compete and then at the end they will go through like an obstacle course. So slime? that used to come on. Yeah, it was like the same shit. But it was like uh, the host was like supposed to be young and cool and look at me, I got a skateboard. As Mark oh. Summers was just like America's dad or whatever. Now I'm with Mark Summers. I would want to go uh, Legend of the Hidden Temple. It was on Nickelodeon as well. It was, but was but it was like your yeah. like your Indiana Jones game show obstacles, mm -hmm. you know, like the yeah. Green Monkeys and the Yellow Jaguars and the different four teams and they eliminated as they go. Then the last remaining team, there's always a team with one boy and one girl. They would go through the obstacle and not try to get got by the. Uh, the indigenous people that were dressed up and trying to kill them with a spear, get all the artifacts. Which sounds, sounds like, like butthole Tanzi to me. Yeah, no, yeah, but only if you win. Sounds like the old school King Kong. Legend of you guys saw the amazing and the game, was. You know, the video. The video game one was pretty good too. I never understood how they could do that, but I like the video game one where they would go into the video game. I have no idea what you're talking what about. What was the name of that one? Was it still the same name? I don't know, but like the, the last challenge, they would actually show the person in like a Nintendo game where they'd have to like jump and stuff and <laughs> yeah. to like duck under the fireball and crap. Like like Pitfall or some shit. It was like the cheesiest looking video game, but they were in it. It was great. What the hell? Uh, I think it was the story of Arcade, wasn't it? I think it's you're right. Arcade. Right. It was just called Nickelodeon Arcade. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at it now. Dude, I do not how, get how they did this. They turned them into like 16 bit players. Yeah. Yeah. And they they'd be a little, on, a little train. It'd have to be like a green screen situation. But like I said, that yeah, they'd have to like duck and dodge and jump. And they'd stuff. have to be looking at a screen of what we could yeah. see while they're on a green screen trying to time yeah. it. Yeah. It's what just called hell? Nickelodeon Arcade. Hmm. Never heard of it. But then again, I'm, You're old, yeah. It. Yeah, I'm old. The OG Ninja Warrior was the best game. Mark, do that motion some more and spit at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Cliff, Cliff is going to catch a case. No <laughs> Cliff. Cliff. Only one. We're going to be saying that shit next year. Yo, no Cliff. Yo, blah, blah, no <laughs> Cliff. So I'm, I'm going to open this up. I have no idea what's in this. So just to give some background, whatnot, shout out to whatnot, um, they're doing this thing the weekend of April, I think, 12th, uh, then the Monday's the 15th, right? So the weekend yes. of April 12th through the 15th called Whatnot Con. So all these people get a – all the Whatnot sellers got a, got a link, and you can sign up, and it's like limited space. So I signed up. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a Whatnot sale. And they're like, cool. We're going to send you your stuff in the mail. So that's what this is. So this is for Whatnot Con. I have no idea what's in here. Um, no tape on the box whatsoever, which is very, very odd. Standard what not quality. Proceed. So they had said to open this on, like, to open it on a reel and then uh, put it out there and tag whatnot, blah, blah, blah. I ain't going to do none of that shit. You don't tell me what to do during your own con. 
Um, all right, let's see what's in this. So we got a whatnot con bag. What do you do with that? I put stuff in it. We got uh, is that a church sign? fan? That's a church it's fan, a, bro. Church fan. Yeah. A lot of mercy. That's for when you so hit up the Bible. That's a church fan. That's when you're up there and be like, I am delivered. <laughs> 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 uh, we got this card. Oh, thank God! Ten dollars, whatever. We got some stick. <laughs> we got some stickers. Oh man, I know Becker wants those. We got another sticker. We got a posted note things, which is this actually comes in handy during the whatnot stream. Um, we got another thing. Yo, this they printed this shit on crazy hard stock. Are you doing uh, values to this as you go? <laughs> oh shit! A free is this a... I hope it's Ninja Funk or Crashdown. <laughs> Yo, it's a big ass stack of comic books. I was not expecting this. What the fuck? All right. Oh, at least we have a giveaway for tonight now. Oh, it is shit. Ninja. It is Ninja Funk. X Men ninety seven foil. Oh, that's cool. Bro, that's fire. Yeah, I will be. I will be giving all this stuff away. Oh man, there's mad spine dents on this stuff. I'll be giving his uh, during the whatnot stream. Disney's Lilo and Stitch. Trash. Not bagged and boarded. Oh, these are all whatnot exclusives. Uh, yeah, Amazing sure. Spider Man 252 uh, print, whatnot variant. Trash. I want one. Say, oh, the Virgin Dog! Trash. It looks like Rian Gonzalez, too. I'm just kidding. Bro, this should. Uh, another X Men 97. That's dope. Yo, bro. That's Ooh. Virgin. Another one. Oh, oh that's the Rob Liefeld. Even... There it is. That's the Rob Liefeld exclu exclusive. Now there, you should have a foil one there in a second. Some I mean, of these things are in bad condition. All these will be given away. Another X Men Seven. Damn, man, X Men Seven. The Virgin. Oh snap! Yo, the the quality of these covers is atrocious. Unless I see the <laughs> Liefeld foil, they did you dirty. Another X Men ninety seven, the Virgin. <laughs> exactly, Trev. I'm just fucking with him, bro. Boris Karloff. That's dope. Is that oh! Treat Williams? Yo, Treat Williams is the shit. No, that's Boris Karloff. This is uh, Grim. Grim is a fantastic read. So this is a whatnot stash loop variant. This is Grim pen and ink number one. Yeah, Grim is like a fantastic read. Brad Booth on the cover, it looks like. Wow. Uh, this is a whatnot con. It looks like an art book. So That's it's pretty a cool. Little art book they here. it so well, man. 100%. Another Grim. Another Grim. He's shiny. Oh, he, he wastes some foil on Grim. Where's the X Men? Oh! <laughs> Beneath the trees where nobody sees. Issue one by year. Covered by Alex Riegel. Who wrote uh, that? Get, uh, this is written by da, 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 Patrick Horvath, which that's fire. Another one. So this is, I guess, the one not exclusive, and there's four of these here. <laughs> <Watch Alex Bravo. laughs> Another <laughs> Boris Korlo. <laughs> there we go. Not the gold one, but there's the silver one. Fucking fire, dude. We're There's not waiting bag. for notice they bag and, for, notice they bag and boarded that one. Yeah, we're not waiting for whatnot con to give that one away. We're gonna give that one away right now. Yo, in all seriousness, they just sent you a bunch of raw books, but had the had the know how to bag and board that book. And there's a yellow yeah. foil one out there too. Man, I'm trying to oh, find Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, 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 Lord. Oh, yeah, all, these dummy. About, all these people that talk shit about Liefeld, feel free not to enter the giveaway. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Mark. It's free stuff. What do you think? <laughs> all right. I'm going to give that give that one away right now. Link Squad. Actually, you know what? <laughs> like, <I> like feet. <laughs> no. Uh, no you know backsies. What? No backsies. Oh, no. I'm going to give it away. But this is going to be... Uh... I don't know. Should I do a link squad only with for the foil? Because I said mm. I was gonna give this away. 
Link it's your stream. Do what you do. Link squad. Link squad. Link, Link squad only. Link squad. There you go. Let me let me get this giveaway tool. To be up. fair, to be fair, there's 36 people in the chat. How many people are in the link squad? Well, then we can decide. <laughs> <laughs> he wants he wants the odds ever in his favor. <laughs> yeah. I want that book so bad, man. I love me some life film. All right, so let's give away this stack of books. Let me just show the stack of books and then we'll get away. This is I literally just grabbed 10 random books from a stack I had sitting over there. So this is what we're gonna give away right now to the chat. Nice. Uh just Justice League Rebirth. Number oh, one, some bronze Captain cover. America, Batman Ooh. Black and White, number one. Looks like a Magnolia cover. The Civil That's War, perfect. Captain America. This is Dope Batman. Dope Rocket Raccoon. Oh, fry hey, this pie. is probably. Yeah, this is probably like 20 bucks, 25 bucks. That's probably a little bit more. Is that the Cardi B Emma, Emma Stone cover? Get there, yep. Steph. You definitely need Blame. to come. Oh, that's a dope cover. Uh, yeah, and then that. So we're going to give that away right now. And then let me just go present the screen. I share screen. Giveaway tool. How original. Hashtag comics. And that's for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, for, that's for the comic thing. Hashtag comics. Yo, that was pretty cool of whatnot to set all that stuff. That was very cool. Yeah, they send yeah, some dope stuff out every now and again. Like I got the Invincible two and three back in the day. It had my name on the back cover. Oh, for real? They're allowed to write asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joking. My Nikki, my Nikki boy. I love my Nikki. I knew so that girl. I love the X Men book is amazing. Gambit's face is a little life belty. Little wide, but they're like that's the only thing that stands out is overly life healthy to me. But even then, I just dig his style. Yeah. Oh, I need my boy. Yeah, I'm gonna give all those comics aside from well, they're all being giveaways. But that day of the um, so the cool thing too with the whatnot, uh, this whatnot con aside from these books to be given away, whatever I, I give away, I get reimbursed for it, so up to 50 bucks. You still have to pay shipping though, no? That's why yeah, I still have to pay. Oh no, 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 yeah, yeah. On the giveaway, yeah, up to the fifth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to pay the shipping, but um, the books. Uh, I, I have to prove or show, take a picture of what I gave away, and then um, yeah. Artem, what's up, dogs? Taylor Winder in the house. Put hashtag comics in the chat. We got thirty I don't entries. Know how the what con works if it's just like a. A stream of back-to-back -back shows that they just flood the chat from one to the next, or people run simultaneously, or what? So it's three shows running simultaneously. So and they give you like every half hour increments, right? So I have April thirteenth. So mark your calendars, bookmark it. I have April thirteenth from nine p.m. to uh, ten p.m. I think. So there'll That's be three Saturday. other. Huh. Saturday night. So yeah, it's going to be on a Saturday night. So there'll be three shows um, that are involved, or three exhibitors at the same time, running uh, concurrently with me. And then the, and I will have to, when my show gets cut, I will have to do a raid into the next show. So we'll have a, a running list of who's in the whatnot con. Um, yeah. Thanks, dog. I I totally forgot I have my glasses on. James Willie, what's up, dogs? The real James Willie in La Casa. All right, we got 32 entries. We are just gonna gonna pull this. This is for that sweet uh, stack of comics. Rigged. <laughs> Rigged. Stop on me. Let's do this. Hey, hey Jason. Jason! Congratulations, Jason! You congratulations. Are you played yourself. Yes. You will also be there at Heroes Con with Jimmy the Don. <laughs> <laughs> you diddled yourself. Jesus Christ. Yo, so huge this year. So Remy, you you in the club. Let's say you in the club, chilling, vibing. Yeah. You know, drinking your hand. Mm -hmm. Remy Q style. <laughs> and it's all about the Benjamins comes on. What are you doing? All about the Benjamins. Yeah. What, what am am I not supposed to to go crazy? Yeah, we were allowed. To... He's asking, "Do you still bounce to pedo music?" 
shit. Yeah. I, okay. So this is so I have no idea what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a that's a that's not like the number one club banger. Yeah. It's all about the Benjamins and put your. It's yeah. all about my, the Benjamins hypnotize and put your hands where my eyes can see. Mm, what was the other one? Uh, the firm one that had the Carl uh, Thomas beat. Phone, uh, phone tap. Yeah, phone tap. All right, y'all want to get into this? We're, we, I'm still going to give away this X Men '97 foil, and then we got to do the Link Squad thing. But you got to get into this music thing. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah. So uh, I had wondered, uh, being close knit as we were, I had no clue really about uh, anybody else's musical tastes aside from DJ. Like I know for me, mar music, music is an important part of my life. Like I can't go daily without it. And uh, so I was just wondering what the other guys top five favorite songs are with no repeats in bands and their number one album, one skip permitted what those were. Five top five songs, no bands duplicated, and number one album with only one skip permitted. This is a lot of homework. I gave it to you Monday, so you had time. <laughs> no, I'll go I first. I'll go first. Right. Top go five first. songs I cannot. Can I get can I just, just let me just pause you? Chat, obviously, like everything we do, play along. Put your favorite songs in the chat. Put your number one albums in the chat as well. Sorry, Nick. Go ahead. All right. Uh, no particular order. This one was tough. Eye for an Eye, Your Beef is Mine by Mob Deep featuring Raekwon, Nas, and uh, I think that was it. Eye for an Eye, Your Beef is Mine. Long. Yeah. Uh, not favorite not angry, ang what I call angry white boy music, even though it's not oh, oh, sung. We're doing five in a row, we're not doing rotation. We can, okay. Uh, I mean, if you just want to blurt out five songs, it's just <laughs> nah, let them let them blurt, let them blurt. Yeah, let go ahead. Cook. Let, go ahead. let me cook, it. Rem. Let me cook, let them cook, let them cook. <laughs> um, second song, Freedom by Rage Against the Machine. That shit is fucking trash. Nah, dude. Nah, you don't know. Uh, the Patient by Tool. The Patient by Tool. Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. God of Wine, Third Eye Blind. And These are favorite album, one, one Skip Permitted, Midnight Marauders by A Tribe Called Quest. Mm. Classic, classic album. You want to play? You want to play? Uh, let, let's give some critique on Nick's uh, choices. Um, I can't give critique on those choices. Obviously, the only song that uh, I really gravitate towards is an eye for an eye, Your Beef is Mine, which is on one of my favorite albums of all time. And maybe not Marauders. The rest of the stuff, I don't know. I'm not an angry white dude, so I, I wouldn't know. You're not white? You're... No. Oh, damn. Full white. <laughs> this is the last time you're on the stream now. No, I just I'm just surprised Tyler's been here as long as he has. Who? Oh. Who? 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 But these are songs that I just listened to a lot here recently, especially uh, a lot of them are a few of them are definitely top top ones for me. But uh, Go Your Own Way by Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. Absolutely timeless. I love Fleetwood Mac. 100%. And I tried to space it out with genres because I listen to everything. But Perfect Imperfections by Kevin Gates. I like Kevin Gates for like 15 years now. Uh, this this guy that I found a couple months ago that I can't quit listening to called Shibuzi. He's got a song he put out a couple months ago called Vegas, which is fucking phenomenal. Uh, Just Pretend by Bad Omens, which if you liked rock and roll in like the late, early 2000s, it's new shit that's like that, but somehow better. And then uh, this is just like one of my all times, just like go to all time. It's Journeys When You Love a Woman. Absolutely love that song for some reason. And uh, for album, 
It would be Journey's greatest hits from uh, 1988. No skips needed, period. That's a very eclectic uh, mix, young man. I listen to everything. Mm -hmm. Proud of you. You go, boy. <laughs> Remy Q, what you got, dog? I got like a hundred things on here. We, we're doing five. So we're doing one album and then and then five songs. Albums, like easy. Not... All right, so five one songs. Album. Uh, Freak on a Leash by Corn. Oh yeah. Uh, I've got Mouth by Bush. Drinks mm. by Twista. Uh, Pop the Trunk by Yellow Wolf. And Put Ooh. Your Hands Where My Eyes Can See by Busta Rhymes. And my Ooh. album of all time is Chronic 2001 by Dr. Dre. And I agree with Mark when I say no skips needed. Even the crazy intro. Uh, bing, 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 bing. It's still Dre Dick. AK. That's a, that's a fantastic album. It's a fantastic album. I wonder if all the West Coast rappers are going to end up being rapers like the East Coast ones. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, nah, no. they're more like they're more like women beaters. You gotta but, worry about them down south boys too. I don't think oh, really. in I don't the think a. A down south is right. Low down south. <laughs> the dirty I think, south. Uh, I keep that to Atlanta, I think. Luda. Right. So here we go. Yeah. Number one. Cut the braids off, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like a good neighbor. <laughs> Artem, yeah, Artem's yeah. got some good choices, Artem. Good choices. Yeah, Artem is rocking. Uh, my top five songs, uh, number one, Nasty Girl by Vanity Six. Love me. That's like my number one song of all time, Nasty Girl, Vanity Six. Even as a youngin', I knew it survived to strip club music. Uh, <laughs> Dick One's Part Two by Mob Deep. Dick Shook One's Part, part two. two by Mob Yeah, Shook One's Part Two. That, that song changed my life. Um like everybody turned gangsta after that song. Triumph by Wu Tang Clan, greatest mm -hmm. uh, posse cut track of all time. Um, Apomatomically, oh, fire. Ninjas Bleed by Biggie from the Life After Death album is probably the greatest storytelling song of all time. And it's just oh. flawless. Over a children's story, Slick Rick? 1000%. Okay. 1000%. The, the, the intricacies in uh, that Biggie song. And the depth to that storytelling is in, in is unmatched, way what's, over a children's story. What's the next Beyonce song you're gonna pick anyway? No, nah, my next song is gonna be 22 by Taylor Swift. Nah, uh, New York State of Mind by Nas. Mm -hmm. New York State of Mind by Nas. Tell it when it goes. Hey, that's a that, that beat black is fun. Yeah, that that Nick Cave song. Mm. And then my number one album of all times. I've said it. Uh, many a times here on the channel, only built for Cuban links. Dot 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 by Raekwon the Chef, featuring Ghostface Killer, which is my favorite album, and I think the greatest hip hop album of all time. It is just perfect. Favorite favorite track on that album? Well, I tried to tell you so. Yes, I did. Uh, favorite track on uh, Only Built for Cuban Links? Criminology. I told you once. I told you a thousand times. I told you, you fucking little monkey, not to fuck me. Hey, hey! Who do you think? So, Nick, do you, do you see us differently now that you know all our musical tastes? He's like, oh, I fuck with this guy no more. Look no. at the shit he listens to. No, not at all. Not at all. It makes me I, interested in... Hard to, yeah, I don't think you can categorize people over five top songs. Like, there's just so oh, many... Oh, I could. It's like... No, no, because you like I like again, I, I had a bunch of songs. I was like, well, what kind of mood am I in? You know what I mean? Like, what am yeah. I doing? Am I driving I, late at night? It's a different, it's a different jukebox then. Like I could, <laughs> I could one hundred, one hundred percent. Yeah, there you go. Yo, that Yellow Wolf song though is fire. It it makes me wonder that just about what you guys are listening to. Like I some of the songs that Mark mentioned, I never heard, and it makes me want to kind of curious Look about. So what I'm going to wind up doing, because I got mad playlists on my Spotify, I'm going to add my Spotify link to my link tree on Instagram. So if people want to go and check my playlist, um, don't judge me because Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion's bongos is probably like on the top of every single one of those playlists. My back chat sounds like bongos. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> Switch. <laughs> what? 
everything about me. All right, so, uh, and he slept that album when I'm in traffic. Hey, Marty Lego with the fantastic Austin LeMay Wolverine uh, original right behind him. Uh, will it be for or after your OnlyFans on your link tree? Probably beforehand. Um, all right, let's give this out. So we're going to give this away. Link squad, we're going to give this away, and then we're going to give out the fisting tree next. So let's let's give and, this away. And the pencils so, on the yeah, table. you got the pencils? The pencils. Did you get the cup of uh, the pencils? I, 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 yo, I like I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. I fucked up. All right. So, Link Squad, this is going to be for this X Men 97 foil. Uh, you know I mean, what's yeah. It's easy to think about right now. Whoever was going to win that big gauntlet fisting thing is now going to win that book first. Mm -hmm. just, just keep in mind, you're, you, you would have spent this wheel one time for a winner and they would have got that gauntlet. Now, that person. Mark really wants that book. <laughs> now, now they're getting that book instead. <laughs> I mean, I'm I can run the gauntlet. DJ, I'm saying, DJ, maybe you should give the gauntlet away first. Is my point. Right, I'll otherwise, give the gauntlet. Otherwise, that person would have won the gauntlet. And now they're getting a book. Just give it. That's just true. give it to Cliff. Just give it to Cliff. We all want no, to see I'll, it. Go to Cliff. I'll, I'll I'll run the gauntlet first. Hold on. Let me just. Rem I'll run the gauntlet first. I'm not trying to like take away the grand finale. No, but, but dude, that's, that's a valid. Mean, that's a valid point. You that's fucker. A massive difference in price. Yeah. Why is the box ripped? The box is not ripped. What are you talking about? Right there. What's that, what's that big spot? No, I ripped the. Um, so this is what is shipping it. It's still sealed. Like the tape is shipping and everything. Oh, that was man. my uh, address label. So I just ripped off they the address. Label. A, they didn't put it in another. Okay. I got they, you. you could tell what it is. Yep. And I paid I would for tell double boxing. What not box untaped over that? You got to wrap it first. I um, know you're getting it. If I, if I get it like that, you're getting it like that. <laughs> you're lucky that it hey, showed up shipping spin, it like that. Before you spin. Yes, sir. Um, I wasn't gonna mention this, but it's been really hard lately. Uh, <laughs> Are you gonna wait to see who wins it first? There's so many illnesses through the family, and um, <laughs> it's just rough times. It's rough times, you know. So. I feel I, I feel you, Remy Bird. That's all. Yeah, I just want to say that. You know, just whoever wins this out there, you know, it's been rough out there. So, so. <laughs> oh, Dito, I'm gonna send you some throat lozenges for your throat. <laughs> Mouse 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 mouse. All right, tell me when to stop shuffling. This is for the gauntlet. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Good luck, everybody, in the link squad. This is for the gauntlet. Ah! Gauntlet time. Stop. Gauntlet time. Come on, Cliff. Gary, oh. Gary, Gary, Gary! <laughs> Gary's going to be able to slip that thing up there sideways. Wow. <laughs> Gary, Gary, if you need to um, clear some shelf space for this, this is about like one Martin big. <laughs> Yo, congrats, Gary. That is awesome. All right. Let's, um, yeah, let's congratulations, give away. Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Remy's just, Remy's hilarious. Yo, congrats, Gary. All right. Let's go back to the wheel of names. Uh, we're gonna. I'm sorry, Gary. We're gonna remove you. You're you're not eligible for the X Men foil. Um, we're gonna give that away. Tell me when to oh, stop. Yeah, how did wins a book? This was a terrible idea. You should have led with the book. How did you let Mark talk you into this? This is a stupid, <laughs> valid idea. Mark, yeah, it was a it was a good idea. If it wasn't a good idea, I would have told Mark to go fuck himself. <laughs> but if you don't send Gary the pencils, you're a piece of shit. Tell me when to stop. stop. He said, so well, A-OK okay it to Nick's kicks and comments. Wow. Oh, my God. Gary, Gary is that, is that real? He... Gary, please reply in the chat if that's real. I think he said it's something he doesn't need. All right, all right, that shit is getting lost in the motherfucking mail if he's getting little kids and his kicks and comments. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> Nick's excited. Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a perfect pairing for my other one. What other one you got? I won the I won uh, this one on the, your two thousand giveaway. Yo, that's right. For real, send it to Nick. Gary, you are the absolute wow. best. Okay, wow. Gary. I, Gary, I love and appreciate. Wow. Gary, I love and Gary, I love and appreciate. 
This guy acts like he won a fucking up, award. DJ. Come on, come on. You know what? Too, I hear Remy fell on hard times. So send it, send it to Remy. No, don't send it to me. Send don't it to send Remy. It to me. Oh my send god. It, send it to Remy. In fact, I'm going to send Remy this one too. <laughs> There's too oh, many wow. fists coming my way. <laughs> Does that mean that y'all going to send it to me next? Is that how this is working? <laughs> Is DJ really gonna lose this in the mail? Wait a minute. Now, well, now I'm a douche if I keep it. Yeah, that's right. I gotta send it to somebody else. No, we're out of time. We're out of time. <laughs> hey, uh, we should give away that book though. Uh, this is a really yeah, good yeah, giveaway uh, that Mark is looking for. Yeah, I, I legit want that book. Is he? What are you talking what? about, DJ? Did you run it without? without rigged. It on the board? rigged. What are you wow, I, 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 I oh, did. Man. I ran it. My bad. Oh, oh, that's pre that's precedent. That's precedent oh, for this. Before he's oh, done it. Man. All right. Oh, so you froze on the screen. You're sitting there holding the book like you're having a, like a silent seizure or something. Okay, so so I'm going to propose this. Listen, this happened to her. No, 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 you're not. You're not proposing shit. Never this is Izzy, right here. Izzy, so this this will save you on this will save you on shipping too. Izzy, I will trade you the gauntlet for the book. What? Send the book to Mark. Only if you send the book no, to Mark. No, I don't need. I can no. I don't want the book that bad, bro. I think that's serious. This shit's getting too confusing. Why is it confusing? Of course it's a deal. A $700 gauntlet for a $40 book. Wait, it was it was $700? You haven't looked this thing up? I put like time and effort into curating this fucking thing, this and like everybody's just like, yo, month, fuck this gauntlet. This is a two-month giveaway, and none of y'all had the word. All right, no, fuck it. I, I didn't know it was $700. I'll take it. Shit. This nah, it's not $700. <laughs> Look, you, Izzy already said deal. Nah. Look, Gary said, Nick, the gauntlet is yours. Stop being a bitch. Nick, you're getting the gauntlet. Izzy's getting the book. There it is. Okay. Izzy, Gary's I will buy, I will, Izzy, I will buy the book. This gauntlet's like a loose joint in prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations again to, to Gary B. And Izzy, let me know what you want to do with the and book. Nick. If anything, I'll give it to you next. Oh, yeah, Nick, Gary B. says his name. Izzy, if you want the book, I'll hand it to you at King Kong uh, next uh, Saturday. Yo, that was exciting. What scale is that gauntlet? That uh, one of one. One of one. No, it's, it's a life size. It's a life size gauntlet. <laughs> Boob. All right, Izzy says yes. So Izzy's getting the book. Oh. Yeah, that was exciting. What am I going to do for the next Lynx box? So the next Lynx box, uh, I was going to announce it next Friday. I'm actually going to give for April a mystery box. So Mr. Nick's Kicks and Comics is actually going to curate, curate a mystery box specifically for the winner. So we're going to give away that box on uh, last Friday in April. And the person who wins will reach out to Nick, tell them who, what characters they like and all this and that. And Nick will curate a mystery box for you. A nice high value mystery box, might I add. Hmm. Hmm. What do you guys got going on? Yeah, what's the deal with your claim stuff? You got a claim cell coming, huh? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I want to have it Monday, but I've been sick all week. Uh, it's still kind of going on. Pressure squirts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> that's a call uh, yes so monday monday 6 p.m eastern there may be a claim sale on instagram on youtube on youtube it will be on youtube the the show is out there already uh raw books uh slabs if you want a mystery box you let me know what a price point so now nah, you know like i said i told these guys that um did he did he did he went away and now no, no, that's it. That's it. <laughs> they, they took the finger out the dike. Oh yo, Artem, hit up Nick on, on Instagram if you have Instagram, sir. Nick uh puts together a mean, mean mystery box and that in a good way. Jesus Christ, Brian, what did I do to you? 
<laughs> wow, raw books, just like Nick says. Jesus, a lot of mercy. <laughs> Let's remind them, dog. Let's remind them. Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. live on my channel, Legion of Comics. I'll have Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, Jason Fabach, and Brian Hitch on the day before all the books release for the big Ghost Machine release. So come by. It's going to be a fun conversation. We're going to run for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes or so. I'll have an awesome giveaway over there. I know a lot of people are hyped for the Ghost Machine stuff, myself included. And if you're not hyped for it, it's because you just haven't got your hands on it yet. So come by and uh, win the entire like first phase of of all this that started as Mad Ghosts and evolved into what it is now. But before that, Sunday night at 8.30, I go live for At Weeks in every week. And this week, specifically because there's another big movie release, we're going to be diving into full spoilers on Godzilla Kong, New Empire. Fantastic movie. Go out see it this weekend. It's a holiday weekend. Go have fun. It's a blast. That's right. It's Easter this weekend. Yo, I totally forgot. What do you do for, um, do you have any traditions in or something? Like, what are you doing with the fam? Uh, we hunt Easter eggs. Oh, you do? Yeah. I, cool. I work and uh, I try to work fast so I can run home and see my kids smile and play and do fun shit. Then I go back to work and I come home and eat. <laughs> And if you don't know what Mark does for a living, check out Legion of Comics on YouTube to find out exactly yeah. what he does. No, to join the membership to do that because that was members only content. Okay. There you go. Nick, what are you doing for Easter? I forgot to ask. I, totally I will be by the I will be by the in-laws starting tomorrow. We have a whole bunch of little kids there oh, now. Oh, that's why you're sick. Got you. <laughs> no, I still gotta go. I still gotta go. Even if you're sick? Even if I'm sick. It's my it's oh, my duty to, to try. You know, I don't want to miss shit either. You know, it's like being a dad. You don't you want to be there for everything. So damn sure do, man. And uh, yeah, so we'll be back Monday, and I wish all of you Christ worshippers a happy Easter. Jesus Christ! Why do you have to say it like that? Je Jesus Christ! It's so weird the way you did that. <laughs> I know you said that so sarcastically. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Give me my gun. Like, <laughs> he's like one of the what? He's like one of the the narrator on like an ID channel um show. Jesus, my boy. And there yeah. were the Christ worshippers. Yeah. As per usual, uh, at Ruby Q Studios uh, Thursday, we talk about it on Let's Talk About It. It's uh, nine o'clock real time, and uh, yeah. <laughs> What are you doing I like for the AI, uh, the AI thumbnails are cute too. Thank you. What are you doing for Easter Sunday, Remy? Uh, we're gonna go watch a movie uh, and not um, Godzilla movie. Oh, I hear the training May December at the theater. <laughs> That's oh, exactly God. what I was hoping for. No, are you joking? No. Ghostbusters. I mean, watch... Yeah, I think we're gonna go watch Ghostbusters. Nice. Has anybody else saw it on the panel? I uh, skipped it. It got mid reviews. It's. I actually just watched the last one uh, on Sunday. So fucking good. Afterlife is so fucking Absolutely. good, and the next one isn't that. Yeah. But I heard I was it's watching. Fun. I was watching Tropic Thunder last night. Oh my god! So good. <laughs> All you had to do was mention the title. Yeah. What's all this talk of book script? Spit that shit out, man. Yeah, it's because you can't cry. <laughs> Can't wait to watch Enemy Mine again. That was a good movie. Yeah. R.I.P. Lou Gossett Jr., man. He was the best in uh, that movie he was in. <laughs> yeah, what I got going on? Uh, I got some, some videos dropping Monday and Wednesday in the mix next Friday. Some shorts dropping in between then. Yeah. Tough. And when, when, when is the whatnot show, DJ? April 13th. So the uh, stream is already up. I haven't populated it with any um, inventory yet, but the, the I'm going to do that probably this on Sunday, like populate that with inventory and then start promoting it. Um, yeah, come through. Prob I'll probably start everything at a dollar. So I'm, I'm going to have like some good variants in there and stuff. One of the books I have in there goes for over, it goes for over a hundred dollars. I'm probably going to start that at a, start that at a dollar as well. Make sure you there bookmark you the show. That's oh, awesome. so that's what that's supposed to be? That's supposed to be like a, a actual exhibitor's badge? That's what it says. Welcome exhibitor. What the hell? Oh, so that's why it's like... 
but it's not in a lanyard or, or anything. Hold on, let me get my church fan. Lord Jesus is a fire. You should dress as church lady for the whole stream. Mm, can it be? Also, oh, check Jesus. out Big Time Collectibles Thursday night, April 11th at 8 p.m. on Whatnot. Uh, yeah, so de definitely go up there and, and bookmark that. I'm going to have a bunch of cool stuff, man. A bunch of cool stuff. Yeah, and that, that's that's it for me. Nick, I hope you feel better, man. I didn't make, make mean to make light of your shitty situation. Can you express mail that gauntlet to my house, please? What did you say? What? What did you just say? I didn't say anything. You said you're lighting the slippers. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for joining us. I know we just started this show a couple of months ago. Thank you for sticking with us. So, golly, it feels so good to start a new thing up like this. Uh, Normally, I would pass, 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 pass. What's the opposite of pass? Cast? Smash. 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 Ooh, interesting. We should do that one episode on this new show in the mix. Yeah. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Happy Easter. Love you. Thank you for watching. Peace. Illuminati.